Okay, good. So we are recording. I'm going to put this up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, take a second and uh, answer this in a private message to Mr. Dutton or to me. And we're going to come together in just another minute or so. Um, hopefully we'll get a few more people to pop in. I don't see anyone in the How about just room. Mr. Tout because I'm outside. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, please just uh, for now, if you're doing uh, group chats, if you're messaging the answers uh, to the warm up, just do that to me because <clears throat> Mr. Dutton is not sitting at his computer, obviously. So, uh, what horizon of soil contains organic matter and which horizon is the top soil? Okay, good answers so far. Thank you guys. Um, I'm getting messages about Zoom. Hold on one second. All right, hold on one second, guys. We're going to get started in just one minute. So please uh, keep the answers coming. I've seen two so far. Good morning, Akia. Um, and it is okay, all right, if you don't remember from yesterday, um, obviously you could refer to your notes from yesterday, but you could also Google it, right? Take a quick look about soil horizons, find a good image for that, because that's uh, what we talked about yesterday in a nutshell. Um. So real quick, while Mr. Tao is taking care of some stuff at home, I wanted to uh, show you my compost pile um, so that we could talk about, uh, when we get to the lecture, uh, we're gonna talk about compost. And so um, here is here is my compost pile. And what I have, I have it organized, well, I'll let Mr. Tout spotlight me. I started talking about my compost pile in the downtime. If I so double if click, could, up, if I'm looking at you, does that spotlight you? you? Spot I think so. Okay. Yeah. Most people should be able to see it now. I can. Okay. I can see me. Okay. All right. So, um, let me see. If I go sideways, that probably helps. Now, this is uh, organized into three different sections, um, and the reason. So that it's, kind of, it's time to decompose that organic matter to turn into usable fertilizer. Um, and so what we see here, this is the oldest compost. This is two years old, two plus years old. Um, this is over a year old in this middle section. And then the final section, as you might be able to tell, is fresh. So this is all within the last year. And... I'll open it up so that we can take a closer look at it. You might be able to imagine it doesn't smell fantastic, um, but uh, this decomposes pretty quickly. 
Um, and so we've got all sorts of food scraps here. Uh, there are some eggshells, but that's the only animal food scraps that are gonna go in here. No meat, because those tend to attract vermin and we, don't, we do not want rats uh, as much as we can avoid them. Um, and there's other things that, there's, there's a mixture of green and brown matter in the compost pile. So uh, you see that I've got some plants that I pulled. Uh, there's also some twigs, but, um, and also some like, you know, dead weeds, grass, that sort of stuff. Um, along with the onion skins and, you know, carrot shavings and, and banana peels, all that good stuff. Uh, so I wanted to take a look. So when we get to the compost section, um, we'll talk in more detail, uh, just a little bit more detail about what that first section looks like, that, that one that's over there, and why it can be a great source of nutrients for a farm or a garden. Beautiful. All right, um, good, Mr. Dutton? Yep. All right, and guys, um, thank you guys uh, for the answers to the warm up. If we pop back over there just for a second, um, and sorry that I ducked out, my dogs were causing trouble and continue to cause trouble, but um, I at least got the whatever it was they were tearing apart away from them. All right, so we're sharing, good. So, um, so uh, the horizon that contains the organic matter, um, that one is, uh, that is the one that is labeled by that letter, that is the O layer, right? And again, that's not what you think of as dirt so much as the, the living and dead organic material, right, on top of, uh, on top of the soil that um, is, uh, being decomposed sort of actively. The top soil, what we call the top soil, is actually the A layer. Sorry, just making sure we got everyone in. Um, all right, good. So the A layer uh, is very, is nutrient rich. Uh, it's between six and 10 inches thick. Um, and that is that first layer of what you, you generally think of as soil. Good morning, Leah. Welcome. I see uh, Arden joined us. Who else just? Good job. Uh, welcome, Akia. So good to see you guys. Thank you for being here. Okay. Um, so uh, just be aware tomorrow uh, is our weekly yoga. Um, we are doing. Uh, we're starting at nine um, because from talking with the people who have participated, uh, that was actually the more popular time. Um, so I know it's a little bit early for you guys if you, if you want to sleep in, I understand, but it's also a really good way to start your day. And, um, and Sada is actually really good at sort of like, let's start slow. Let's start as if like you're sort of starting in bed or, you know, finding your way to a chair or just a seated position in bed. So she is sort of just taking us through a nice, gentle start to our day. So I really, uh, I urge you guys to join us tomorrow morning. It's, it's well worth it. I've done it the last three weeks or two weeks, I think three weeks. And uh, it's really helped, helped uh, with the anxiety that comes with all of this social distancing. Also, I have something to say, but not like, it's not super important. I guess it's kind of like, contradicting like the whole getting up early thing but there's a meteor shower tonight so if anyone wants to see that oh cool yeah yeah and uh, so unfortunately obviously we can't like all meet up at the natural history museum true i'm but, just saying if somebody wants to drive to some like remote field in sugar and falls then feel free but yeah and, and meteor showers are really an amazing experience guys it's, it is another thing that uh, you should put on your bucket list, even if you don't try to capitalize on it tonight. Um, you know, keep an eye out for those things. They really are um, sort of, I guess they inspire a sense of magical, right? Um, yeah. uh, and very quickly uh, to review the atmosphere, does anyone know what layer of the atmosphere they, that meteors tend to break up in or burn up in? Ozone? Yep. It's the, the middle sphere, which is known as the 
I heard someone say it. Ozone. Oh, no, no, not ozone. That's what I said. But I'm sorry. The middle sphere is the mesosphere. What sphere do we live in of the atmosphere? Oh, no. All of my teaching is gone. We live in the troposphere. All right. And now we're going to go back to the lithosphere. We're going to talk more about the lithosphere uh, because we are um, we are talking about soil, right? The lithosphere is uh, discussing, so we're introducing our soil systems. Um, and today, um, today we are going to try to get you guys started on our next at-home experiment. Um, which is really a pretty good opportunity to uh, uh, to <laughs> to learn about your backyard slash front yard slash you know tree lawn in front of the apartment slash whatever is around. Excellent guys. Oh, sorry, I missed some of you answering in the Zoom chat. Thank you guys. You were right on with the troposphere. Excellent. Okay, so jump back over to Nearpod. Um, I will try to do that as well. Maybe. So the code for today, am I still sharing screen? Oh, am I? The code for today is UF Matt. which uh, if you were unsure stands for the United Front, uh, or no, sorry, United for More Agricultural Time, because we're talking about agriculture. So we are united today for more agricultural time. Good one, Tao. I do what I can. Um, and we are guys, uh, 5.2 by the way, is really the agriculture section. So right now we're still talking about the soil that is the basis of our agriculture system. Okay, uh, let me put this into chat. So please get into Nearpod, use that code. Um, we do have um, some fun um, we do have some, uh, at least a time to climb, uh, and a couple other questions for you guys. Oh, I don't want to leave it. I want to go backwards. Sorry. There we are. <clears throat> so very quickly, just to review yesterday, right? We, we've just reviewed the lithosphere, right? Okay. We don't need to go through all of this if I can. have my okay so we're, we're introducing soil systems right and uh, what I actually want to start off with uh, is where my brain farted yesterday uh, when I was trying to remember how to use the triangle in terms of predicting what type of soil you're going to have um, real quick, can someone group chat or share what is the most uh, useful type of soil um, for growing crops? Is it clay, sand, or silt? Oh man, okay, someone already got it. It was a trick question. None of the three of them is the best. It is the mixture of the three which we call loam. Thank you. Nice work, Leah. Um, so, Nice work, Dade. So uh, loam is what you want to create in terms of uh, the best case scenario for growing plants. Um, now, how do we use this triangle? If we flip back through the discussion we had yesterday about what is soil, the porosity, the horizons, right? That was our warm up. Um, the differences between A, B, and C. 
um, translocation, salinization, and leaching. Finally, size. Okay, so this soil tri triangle, um, how do we use it? What you, uh, so first of all, you want to start, you're going to be aware that these percentages have to add up to 100%, right? And uh, Ayana was courageous and took a first shot at like what loam soil was. And uh, she did exactly what I did the first time I looked at it. It was like, for some reason, it adds up to 180%, which just doesn't make sense, right? Um, it's got to add up to 100%. So the way that works is loam soil, what you want to do is uh, pick two of the three numbers, right? So let's just say loam soil is 40% silt and 40% sand, right? Take your 40% silt. She, do I have? Forty percent silt, and I can't draw. <laughs> Take your 40% silt line until it matches the 40%, until it meets the 40% sand line. That will if you, you know, do the math, you know that there should be 20% left, right? 20% of it is clay, okay? So your challenge now is in the group chat, I want you to pick three random numbers, or I guess rather two random numbers, um, but that the add up to 100. And I want you to tell the group what type of soil those numbers are. So I'll give you guys an example. Um, if I just choose the, the examples I was going to show you, things like 20, 30, 50, 40, 40, 20, 50, 10, 40, right? What I want you guys to do, I'm going to choose 20, 30, 50. <clears throat> and in the group chat, what I'm going to type is 20% sand, and 30% silt equals what? And so then I am going to try to erase this. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure it out, right? 20% sand, so I gotta come over to sand. Here is my 20% right? 20% sand and it's 30% silt. So I'm going to follow this line until I get to 30% silt, right? There's 30% silt. And I've discovered, right, that this is clay soil, right? And it would be 50% clay. So then what I'm going to type to the group is equals clay soil. So what I'd like for each of you guys to do, there's uh, two John Duttons, so I'm not going to count both of them. And I've already done it, so I'm not going to count me. But we've got Leah Dade, Jayla Yunus, Arden Alanis, Ben, and Akia. So that's eight. So let's uh, quickly, guys, just uh, figure out your combination. Pick, it, pick any three numbers, or again, rather, any two numbers that add up to 100, sorry, any three numbers that add up to 100, and then I want you to figure out the type of soil they are and type it into the, the Zoom chat. And if you're not sure or you get stuck, that's okay. Feel free, you can message me privately and I can, uh, I can tell you um, how, I would, how I would do that one. Awesome. So Dade is choosing 70, 20, 10. And, and Dade, don't, uh, now figure out what it is and tell us what it is. What type of soil? Hey, Franklin, Franklin. No.
Guys, take one more minute. One more minute. Um, nice work, Akia. Now, Dade and Akia, make sure to figure out what uh, type of soil you have created. Which means you're going to have to pick like 50% what? Like 50% silt, 50% sand. Sorry about that. <clears throat> um, just dealing with, you know, everyday classroom uh, hurdles. Uh, my dog just had uh, diarrhea in the middle of the living room, so I had to clean that up real quick. <laughs> Don't mind me. Ew. You know, just like a normal everyday class setting. <laughs> How would you rate the texture of that diarrhea on this? It was definitely, it was definitely uh, silty loam. Uh, all right, so anyways, um, looking at uh, you guys, I'm just gonna choose one just because you guys uh, are looking like, it's looking good. Uh, I'm gonna pick Dade's because he's putting question marks next to his. Thank you, Dade, for sharing that one with us. <coughs> Um, so my uh, take on this, uh, Dade is saying 70, 20, 10, and I guess uh, we do need to know what they are. He's saying he thinks it's sandy loam clay. So uh, let's, let's figure out, let's assume that's 70% sand, okay? And now we have to follow this 70% line until we get to 20% loam, right? Oh, and that's actually this way. So this is 70% sand to 20% silt and 10% clay, right? Mr. Tout? Yeah. So uh, that line that you're following is the dividing line between the two textures, between loamy sand and sandy loam. Thank Not you. the line that you follow Good for call. percentages. Yeah, no, no, thank you. You're right. So 70, there we go. I followed the wrong line. 70% <laughs> sand, 20% clay. Thank you, Dade. Thank you, Mr. Dutton. I appreciate the help. Uh, you guys know I need it. And of course, by default, we've used up 90% of the soil. So 10% that's left is clay. So it's 10% clay. So yes, that is sandy loam. Loam does mean uh, vegetation's gonna grow there, right? So you can grow things there. Not necessarily good agricultural products, but sandy loam will grow things versus you know, loamy sand also will grow things, but probably different species will thrive there. When you end up with pure sand, right? 100% sand, do things grow very well in 100% sand? No. Same thing with do things grow very well in clay soil? No, right? Things do not really grow in clay. 
and things don't really grow in pure silt. Um, so note that most of these other things have loam in the name, meaning stuff grows there, right? Uh, the only exceptions are sandy clay and silty clay, which uh, again are because they don't have the word loam, uh, don't grow things very well or hardly at all. You don't end up with uh, plants that can grow here very well. Okay, all right, so uh, wrapping things up, we do want to wrap this up um, because I want you guys, I want us to start the experiment together. I want us to go through this so you guys can see uh, the experiment is, is fairly simple, guys, um, and it is, it's definitely DIY, like you can do it at home. So uh, to wrap up our conversation from yesterday, we did not uh, get to the slide on porosity, permeability, and particle size. And uh, if you weren't already aware, I love alliteration. Um, wait, is alliteration vowels or consonants? Isn't there one that's different for consonants? English majors, anyone? Alliteration means using the same letter, uh, consonants. C O N S O N A N C E means using the same consonant in alliteration. So it's a subset. Also, okay. Mr. Tat, I would just like to point out none of us here are English majors unless we're adults because we're kind of in high school. Well, yeah, but fine, be that way. All right, but. And I'm not an English I just, major, I just play one on TV. Future English. Oh. I guess I mean future English majors. You are correct. You're not English majors yet, but all right. So porosity, permeability, and particle size. Uh, we've already talked about particle size, but one of the key things that particle size does uh, dictate is um, both the porosity and permeability of a soil. Um, remember, things like pure sand are incredibly porous. Um, because sand is the largest particle, there's the most space between them. They drain really well. They drain water uh, very quickly. Um, so porosity generally it refers to the amount of space between the particles. It is very closely related to permeability, which is the ease at which gases and liquids pass through. So these two are very closely related. The more porous something is, the more permeable it is. Now, there is, again, they are slightly different though. So uh, you, know, it, you can, if you take a look at the bottom picture, as the particle size gets smaller, the porosity gets smaller and the permeability gets less, right? And clay is effectively impermeable or non-permeable, right? And non-porous. Whereas gravel is both just highly permeable and highly porous, right? Sand, uh, generally speaking, is porous and permeable, right? But then when you get into silt, you start seeing, or, or, uh, and I should, I guess I should also say, right, uh, uh, silty clay, right? Uh, different mixtures of soils, because you rarely have pure of any of these things. Normally, you have a mixture of two or three of them. But uh, silt or, or uh, silty clay, things like that, um, tend to be slightly porous but non-permeable. That is, the particles are connected enough that uh, liquid and gases can't really get through them very well. However, um, they are still technically, they, they do have a level of porosity. There is space between the particles. Okay, so hopefully that slide uh, got everyone a little bit peeved. No one? No one? Okay, good. Um, so, um, soil acidification does require a very quick review of pH, but, um, and we did our experiment, right, where we poured soil, right, we were looking at acid rain. Uh, so we used vinegar and we poured vinegar uh, and a various uh, dilutions of vinegar into our plants to see the effect on the plant growth, right? Um, what you're doing by adjusting or by adding acid rain, what you get is different acidities of soils, right? Or different, your soil pH changes. 
So um, which one is acidic again? Really low pHs or really high pHs? Excellent, very low. Uh, pHs of one and two are, are actually dangerous. And remember, this is a logarithmic scale. So uh, something that's a pH of two is 100 times more acidic than something, sorry, 10 times more acidic than something that's a pH of three. It would be 100 times more acidic than something that's a pH of four. So a lemon Wait. is 100 times more acidic than a tomato on this picture. Is that why when you drink too much milk, like your body can't handle it, so it like makes you throw up? Um, that is a good question. I don't believe it's the pH of the milk that is the problem. Um, I believe that uh, it has. I don't know. I yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to dive down that rabbit hole because I have some conjectures, but I don't have a lot of evidence, and we are running out of time. So, ah. um, but that is a good question and and worthy of some more research. Um, so one thing about uh, acidic soils that I just wanted to point out while you're on the slide is that I've got the camera pointed on a hydrangea. Yeah. Uh, which, is a, which is a type of plant that actually changes uh, color, the flowers that are currently dead, these paper-like flowers here. Um, they, this is obviously, uh, these are dead leaves from last year, uh, dead, dead flower petals rather from last year. But this actually changes color based on the acidity of the soil that it's in. And so if it is in an acidic soil, then it will have slightly red or even pink leaves uh, and flower petals. If it's in a basic soil, it will actually have a bluish or purplish tone to it. So there was actually, um, this is, sorry, okay. Um, there's a thing at the uh, Natural History Museum where in the backyard area where they have like the wolves and stuff, they had like a whole like, like a, a What's the word? It was like they changed colors. Got the like as you walked, it was so cool. Um, and they actually like explained that, and it was really cool because there's one kid who was just like they poured vinegar in the soil, but it was okay. Never mind. But it was really cool. So if we take a peek. Again, I do want to make sure we have time to get you guys started. But if you take a look at this picture, right, you can manipulate the color of the flowers, especially if you're a florist trying to sell these, right? You can uh, manipulate the color of your hydrangeas by doing an experiment similar to what we did, right? Uh, varying the pH of the soil, right? To get you slightly different shades uh, from pinkish to purplish, right? And in between. Excellent. So um, now that is right within a certain range of acidity, right? The more acidic situations are bad for plants, right? Uh, and just to, uh, to, to give you guys this one piece of important detail, the reason acidity is bad, right? If your soil becomes acidic, uh, the reason plants get sick and die is this jump right here. Acidic soil tends to release more ions, specifically aluminum and iron uh, ions. So aluminum and iron ions uh, are not good. So this is, you know, these are nutrients technically, but they are what we would consider micronutrients. You only want very small amounts of them. Um, and when they're released in mass, right, as the, as the pH of your soil drops, when they become released in mass, this ends up damaging plants and even killing them. So just be aware that uh, the, the, the release of these ions has, is what has the impact there. I guess as a chemist, I, I geek out about that stuff. Okay, the important nutrients um, that are worth noting, right? Uh, right? We just mentioned aluminum and iron are micronutrients. The big three, right? In order to keep your topsoil or your A horizon healthy, you need NPK. Right, um, NPK, as everyone just knows, obviously, uh, stands for nitrates, phosphates, and potassium. Um, again, uh, as a chemistry geek, this one's obvious to me, but you may not remember from last year, uh, K is the symbol for potassium. And there is another reason why you would not want to call this NPP. That is actually, that stands for something else, net primary productivity. 
So uh, there are enough uh, there are enough abbreviations in ESS that this can be confusing. So NPK stands for nitrates, phosphates, and potassium. These polyatomic ions, nitrates and phosphates, you can probably find in your cereal right now. Like if you go look at your um, uh, the ingredients list of your cereal, they most likely have these in them. And potassium, you're probably aware, can be found in bananas. So these are actually nutrients for us as well. We, potassium is, is found in a lot of things. We associate it with bananas. Um, so when you grow crops, they take these things out of the soil. And then when you harvest those crops, the topsoil has a, redu a reduced amount of these nitrates, phosphates, and potassium ions. Um, also, if you experience leaching, right, which is in cold climates with lots of rain, you end up losing nutrients. They leach into the subsoil or the B horizon. Um, either way, losing these nutrients in your topsoil is a bad thing. So uh, what do we do? We replace them. And there's a ton of different ways to replace them. Um, chemical fertilizers are quite popular, especially in industrialized agriculture. Industrialized agriculture literally just means you're using things from the Industrial Revolution. You're using machines that burn fossil fuels, right, to, uh, to do sort of mass farming. This is generally for-profit farming, right? This farmer is not growing these crops so that his family or, or her family can eat. This farmer is growing them so that their family can sell these things and make money. So that's, his, that's their business. Um, you can replace those uh, materials with organic matter, such as compost, which Mr. Dutton is showing us right now, if you can see his picture. Uh, his compost this pile is... is very, and this is very mature compost. This is, like I said, it's almost three years old. And so uh, worms and other micro uh, organisms have uh, broken this down into uh, basically pure nutrients. Excellent. And that's very rich in, in both micronutrients and in your NPK. So notice that, or, or note that the benefit to that stuff is that it has those nutrients. Um, wait, I went back too soon. I have to share my screen before I go back, don't I? So, um, so that compost is a really uh, valuable way to get those nutrients uh, back into the soil. Another way is with manure. So if you have both um, livestock and, uh, and um, uh, crops, you can use the manure from the livestock to uh, get nutrients back into the soil. Um, another way is crop rotation because different plants and different crops use different uh, nutrients in different ways and they, they all replace nutrients in different ways especially if legumes or other beans are in that rotation uh, because they are actually um, they're actually responsible for bringing nitrates in particular back into the soil so um, the four soil health principles right are just sort of this idea of you want to minimize the disturbance, right? If we want to keep our soil healthy, we should actually be, theoretically, we should be moving away from an industrial agriculture, right? Which is very high disturbance, high turnover. Uh, you want to max, maximize soil cover. You don't want to leave soil open because uh, that means when it rains, it washes things away. So you want to have some sort of thing growing on your, in your soil. Um, you want to maximize biodiversity. So having both livestock and crops um, and then um, maximize continuous living roots, right? Because those root systems uh, both grow deeper, but they also hold the soil together. So a lot of uh, ways to keep um, our topsoil healthy. And finally, we've made it to the time to climb. Last slide. So um, let's, I think we should probably stay on the soil. So I guess Himalayans, the Himalaya is at least in the lithosphere. So go ahead and join this. And then as soon as we're done with this, uh, we're gonna quickly uh, go over the start of the lab again.
All right, we've got four out of the eight of you in. Oh, sorry, no, we're up to 10 now. Thank you. Welcome, Lena. Welcome, Gabe. Welcome, Dade. Welcome, Arden. Let me give you guys, uh, we're going to get started in 30 seconds. So please join in real quick, um, the other five of you, if you want a chance at the ultimate bragging rights. Welcome, Makaya. Welcome me. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Begin. All right, which type of soil is the best for agriculture? Excellent. All right, next question. Which one of the following are inputs into a soil system? Next question, which one of the following are outputs from a soil system? Fourth question, which of the following are storages in a soil system? Can anyone catch Gabe? Gabe's got the edge on Dave. Uh, Dave's got it back. We're looking at the last question. It all comes down to this. Which of the following is an incorrect description of a layer in the soil horizon? Oh man, I think now. Oh man. And Dave pulls away with it. All right, thank you guys. Uh, excellent work. Uh, Mr. Dutton is about to, oh good, you already took back the host thing. Mr. Dutton is going to give you guys a quick overview of the lab. All right, guys, two and a half minutes or less. Ready? So um, I've got in front of me, if, you, if you're looking at my video, I've got in front of me the uh, samples that I pulled. 
Um, my goal for you guys is just to pull one sample and do this experiment for it. If you manage to pull three samples, then great. That's awesome. Um, but really just stick to one, make sure you get one. So I used a trowel. You can use anything really to dig into the soil. Um, and please get permission before digging up lawn like I did. Um, and try to pull four to six inches of soil so that you can see a good soil profile here. We can even see the horizons really clearly. All right, we see this organic matter and then there's the topsoil. So make sure to take a picture of what you get out uh, because you're gonna need that picture later for when you describe it. Um, and by the way, this presentation is all on uh, the, all on Google Classroom, all on the current week's work. Um, so if you get a second sample, try to vary it. This is a very weedy area versus the lawn. Um, and then you see that the, the soil looks very different in that area. There are all these little pockets of nutrients. Um, if you can get a third sample, um, I went into an area that was overgrown. So um, I tried to choose, you know, three very different areas and, and see, we, we, we don't see those little pockets of nutrients. Um, we're, we're seeing very different looking soil, even though it's all kind of the same texture. It's very different looking soil. Um, use plastic container or a jar. It could be a mason jar, could be an old peanut butter, peanut butter jar. Um, put the soil or soils in that container. Um, you see that it's about half full. I know that it looks like this is all the way full, but there's lots of empty space in here. So it should be about half full in that container. If you don't have the right kind of container, that's okay. Just make do, make it as half full as you can. Um, and make sure that you have lids for the containers as well. Mr. Dutton, are you, uh, are you trying to show us the pictures right now? Oh, no, I didn't do that, did I? <laughs> I thought I did. I, I was having a good time all on my own, wasn't I? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right, let me briefly, briefly, briefly go uh, backwards here just to show you all those things that I just finished saying. So pull up from the lawn about four to six inches. This is what it should look like in profile. Uh, here's the textures. Uh, here's the different horizons. Um, I'm gonna skip forward to what I was just saying was that when you store it in some sort of uh, plastic or glass container, um, try to fill it about halfway up. Um, make sure that you have lids for your containers as well um, because uh, after this next step, you're gonna need to mix up some water. Uh, remove any large plants or worms. There's a large plant, here's a worm. Uh, you don't want them to get mixed up in this next part. Uh, I used a fork, make sure to wash that fork afterwards, be nice, uh, but separate that soil as much as you can. Uh, fork hands, whatever you can to mix it all up and to allow it to liquefy a little bit. Add as much water as there is soil, so you're looking for about a 50-50 mixture. Um, you want to stir and mix some more in order to break up the soil. So once you've got it 50-50 uh, full with water, stir once more and then shake, 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 shake. Um, shake a lot and that way you will end up with something. Mr. Dutton, you're breaking up again. Oh, sorry. I'll go back. So Thanks. after you fill up with water, stir and mix it up some more to break up the soil and then shake, 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 shake to break up the remaining soil. And then you should end up with something that looks like this, where you're gonna start to see the water separating from the soil and you will start to see something like this. If you wanna look at my, if I can show on the camera real quick, you start to see all of the layers start to separate out of silt, clay, and sand. And that's what we're gonna do on Friday. Uh, it takes 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours for all this to settle out. Uh, so you wanna make sure that you do that either today or tomorrow in order to uh, ensure that you have good data for Friday. If you just get that's one, that's fine. Go ahead. I have old soil from my um, old IA from my backyard and it's just been sitting in one of my drawers. Is this enough and also is it, will this work? Yes and yes. It, so I can use this? Yes, absolutely. All right, because and this imagine is- Imagine being gay and just opening up your sock drawer to find dirt, bro. No, I'm serious, bro. Look at this, bro. Love it. 
Why do you have so, so they, much dirt that's there? Perfect. That's perfect. I, I don't want to know why you have so many soils, but uh, yeah, go ahead and try to do one, try to do one for you. Okay. So, so this will work. This is yep. enough to work. Yeah. All right, but I just got a yeah. drawer draw of soil. <laughs> Any other questions? No. Awesome. All right. Um, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Tout. That was awesome. Uh, yeah, thank you, guys. Thank everyone for being here. Appreciate you guys. Good to see you. Zainab, stick around. I know you're not going anywhere. Mr. Dutton. So uh, I already told you about the dog. Yeah. Um, so of course, when I saw him going, I threw him in the backyard real quick and then came back and started teaching again. Yeah. Um, and then about like 10 minutes ago or five, whatever, like right about the time, oh, when we were in time to climb, I look out my front window and he's just like in my neighbor's, <laughs> neighbor's yard across the street. I'm just like, God, come on, Franklin, you are killing me. So I ran out, grabbed him, ran back during time to climb. He's, had, he's having quite a fun day. Oh. <laughs> Poor puppy. Yeah. Just doesn't even know what's happening probably. It's just like, oh, okay. Uh, usually I get attention at this time. No, I'm not. What's yeah. happening? So Zainab, uh, just to give a little backstory, I believe I've already told Mr. Dutton, but we got a new dog about two months ago. And he is a very big dog. And he can just jump over my fence in the backyard. So he just like periodically, like we try to keep an eye on him because he won't do it if we're like looking at him and yell at him. But, you know, I, I threw him in the backyard during class because he was not uh, clearly not feeling well. And um, apparently while he was out there, he just jumped over the backyard and was wandering around my neighborhood. So, so I have, <laughs> but he's back. Everyone's okay. And I have a meeting on uh, Friday, no, Thursday, Thursday, because we have class on Friday. I have a meeting on Thursday with a fence guy who's going to at least give me an estimate on building a, a taller fence. Good. Good. Right, guys, Mr. Dutton, Ms. Shahid, it's good to see you. Yeah. Uh, hope to see you both tomorrow morning for yoga. You will definitely see me. Zainab can uh, bring her siblings. Yes, definitely. All right, see you guys.